Bond is back. It's the easiest tagline ever and for a while was pretty much trotted out every two years like clockwork. In 1983, the Bond film series was celebrating its 21st anniversary, with Roger Moore returning for another adventure. Though, the title raised some eyebrows, and not just Roger Moore's. Octopussy. Octopussy is a better name for the film than the working title Ocho Gina, and was named after an Ian Fleming short story. The plot of the Octopussy short story was used as a bit of backstory for the title character and the plot of another short, Property of a Lady, inspired scene set at an auction. That's my little octopussy. The rest of the film would delve a little more deeply into the Cold War than most Bond films had done. And while Bond was doing his delving, he also went to the two Germanies and India. It's like a travelogue with a split personality one full of exotic locales and glamorous gymnasts, and the other where Bond is assaulted by a sausage-wielding German. After For Your Eyes Only made a credible effort to be a more serious film, Octopussy was going to stick more closely to the traditional Bond format. Gadgets, death-defying stunts, and girls tottering around on high heels around swimming pools. John Glenn was back in the director's chair. Toro, sounds like a load of bull. James. There was the looming threat of Sean Connery's comeback in Never Say Never Again. In fact, I was going to put you in my memoirs as number one. Producer Albert R. Cubby Broccoli was anxious to put on a good show, and there was a very strong chance he might have to do it without Roger Moore, who by now was treating each film as if it were his last. I'm not for hire. Oh, a man of principle. Actors were auditioned, with the most promising candidate being American actor James Brolin, but realistically there was only one way to counter the Connery charisma, and that was to throw money at Roger Moore, in order for him to appear one more time as James Bond 007. Well, let's get on with uh, making a few. During 1982 and early 83, when both films were in production, the rivalry between the two movies was hyped up in the media, as if we should give two shits about which was better, when really we should have been celebrating, holy shit, we're getting two James Bond films this year. Octopussy. Octopussy sees Bond following the trail of a fake Fabergé egg that turned up in the hands of a dead 00 agent just as the real thing is being auctioned off in London, where a sneaky 007 swaps the real egg for the fake egg. Or is that the real egg? And that's the fake egg. But it is a good thing that Bond didn't end up buying the egg because the auction house has a bullshit restocking fee. Speaking of eggs, I think these little things in my boots may be spider eggs. Bond follows the buyer, Kamal Khan, back to India. Plays a round of backgammon against Khan. Spend the money quickly, Mr. Bond. I intend to. Has a drink with Magda. He suggests the trade. The egg for your life who slips out of his grasp, and Bond eventually meets up with a woman whose father Bond was once sent to arrest. So you are the mysterious octopus. And to answer the obvious question, she just has the two hands. Otherwise, she'd make organising a poker night that much easier. Maybe later? Octopussy has a band of wayward women that she's trained up in her combined circus and jewel smuggling operation. Meanwhile, General Orloff is dismayed at the USSR's involvement in arms limitation talks and wants to make an invasion of Western Europe that much easier by setting off a nuclear bomb in West Germany, which would really annoy anyone who had plans to attend Oktoberfest that year. Octopussy seems somewhat overlooked as a Bond film. The 80s were average years for the Bond franchise, and the series rarely went much beyond, eh, pretty good. But the costs were contained, and they had a fairly reliable box office return, regardless of the critics, who were often ready to stick the boot into the Bond films with each subsequent release. But Broccoli and Co. stuck to the formula more often than not, which is great when you're talking about, say, your favourite drink, but for movies was the surest way of outstaying your welcome. Like that time Auntie Beryl visited for Easter and drank all of my favourite drink. Two years later, another Bond film, Yawn, and the criticism was occasionally justified. I don't think I ever loved Octopussy, though I think over time it's held up rather better than most of the Bond films from that decade. Its threat is credible. Be at least 20 miles away when it goes off. And the plot mostly holds together well, like a hot air balloon knitted from wool. Octopussy. I would enjoy another opportunity to take care of Mr. Bond 
personally. I will take care of Mr. Bond myself. Roger Moore walking around India in a dinner jacket without raising a sweat isn't remotely believable, just like the judge said about my expert forensic testimony in court. But the film does get a few opportunities to show Bond in an occasionally frazzled state. Are you with our group? No, ma'am, I'm with the economy tour. Octopussy also has some wonderful villains. Louis Jordan as Kamal Khan is syrupy smooth as well as dangerous. Octopussy. Like maple syrup eye drops. We prefer a curare with an effective psychedelic compound. His henchman Gobinda is a scary mofo, like jalapeno eye drops. But it's Steven Burkhoff, always an interesting actor, who comes off best in this film. He's probably the most interesting villain of any Bond film this decade. Though, again, one with motivations of pure megalomania. The West is decadent and divided. It has no stomach to risk our atomic reprisals. Maud Adams as Octopussy is probably the Bond woman that seems least ridiculous smooching Roger Moore, even though he was still much older than Adams. That would be the most plausible explanation. She's confident and able to hold her own for the most part. Octopussy. Adams and Moore have possibly the best on-screen chemistry of any of Moore's on-screen pairings. I don't have to apologize to you, a paid assassin, for what I am. Of course, Adams had also appeared as the villain's girlfriend in Moore's second Bond film, The Man with the Golden Gun, where Adams had played second fiddle to Britt Eklund. Her sidekick in Octopussy, Magda, played by Christina Weyborn, also Swedish, but not quite as believable as Adams, possibly due to the dubbed voice making her sound like a radio commercial for a headache tablet. Well, in that case, I'd better return it. Hugh's got his gadgets, Moneypenny has a young assistant for Bond to latch onto, and there's a new M played by Robert Brown. Roger Moore's advancing years are evident, but here he at least seems up for the task. I mean, Moore was in his mid-50s by this time, which you may think is a bit old for James Bond, but I'd direct you to Daniel Craig, who wasn't awfully far off that during the making of No Time to Die. Think of Moore not so much as a fine wine, more of a scotch that's been sitting in a barrel for more than a decade, forgotten in a boarded up cellar, and then finally cracked open by squatters. Smoother than maple syrup and nasal spray. That's not to say Octopussy is always brilliant. Contrast in the exciting action with moments of humour has always been part of the series' appeal. Go out and get him! Out there. Go. Contrasting the action with uh, this. <laughs> Look, I'm sure I laughed at it a few times, but at the same time, the film would have been better without it. Like how my boots would be better off without a colony of spiders living in them. Why are my feet tingling? Tennis pro VJ Armitrage appears as an agent who's a part time tennis pro and uses a tennis racket to combat attacking thugs. Game, set, and match. Sit. Is there a disconnect with the bulk of audiences and hardcore James Bond fans who can come off as a bit of a humorless lot that hate any form of humor, which basically means they can only watch Casino Royale, but not that one, this one. Contrast this with a mass audience of more casual viewers who, for a very long time, couldn't stomach Bond films without heavy lashings of puns, elementary Dr. Leiter, witty one-liners, I think he's attempting re-entry, sir. Not so witty one-liners, blow up your pants, or even shitty one-liners. I got me a regular Ben Hur down here. Not that you'd know it by watching this channel and its ultra serious tone, in depth research, and hard hitting analysis, but I might enjoy humor a little more than some people. I'm afraid it's me. And the lack of laughs, to me, rarely makes something better, unless it's something trying to be funny but really isn't. Octopussy mostly gets the balance right. John Barry returned to do the score, and there there seems to be a disconnect. John Barry's scores are usually solid, though the theme songs, even the nice ones like Rita Coolidge's All Time High, generally aren't as well remembered by more casual audiences in the same way as songs like For Your Eyes Only, Nobody Does It Better, or Live and Let Die, which are all popular Bond themes from films not scored by John Barry. All Time High sounds a bit generic at first, but over time, like the boot spiders, it's grown on me. We're in all time high. You suck, get off the stage. Oh, come on, give him a chance. Octopussy is more than a giggly, sexy title. Octopussy. An aging star. There never will be anybody but you. 
and a routine entry in the series that was more complacent than whoever forgot to renew the iceberg collision insurance for the Titanic. It successfully fended off the challenge from rival Bond film Never Say Never Again and managed to best it at the box office. And if for no one else other than me, is a much better film, even if you like Connery's interpretation of the role more than more. After six films though, things were looking like Octopussy might have been the last outing for Roger Moore as James Bond. I think you should stay. But then he came back two years later for what would be his absolute final, final, absolutely final, last, last, last ever for realsies this time James Bond film, A View to a Kill. The name is Bond, James Bond. Is he? Are you? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below or check out some of our other videos.